was Sean there with his uh, contribution to this Star Trek II Wrath of Khan review. The reason why he's not wanting to do this is because, well, I keep baiting him with Into Darkness, which I know for you original Trekkie fans absolutely hate that film. And I can see why, because it's not really the greatest. But I have one defense of that film, which I'll talk about later. Star Trek II Wrath of Khan came out in 1982, and it was significantly better, shorter, and more to the point than the original film was. I've only ever seen a contemplation of it from the Nostalgia Critic, and all I can say is, holy shit, I can't believe how much you look at a spaceship for. So, while watching Wrath of Khan, admittedly the beginning is like, okay, we're looking at space, oh, there are the credits. But the film is actually kind of interesting. It really really, really heavily bases itself off of two pieces of old literature, one being Moby Dick and the other being A Tale of Two Cities. And you're constantly reminded about how many times they're used. Not in a bad way, it's just a lot. In this film, Kirk is bored of being an admiral. He doesn't do anything, all he does is he comes on the ship and he looks at test scores and whatnot, so he wants to kind of get back into the groove of it, and the best he can do is by going on a test run with some newbies on the Enterprise. Meanwhile, Chekhov and Captain Tyrell come onto this planet, which they're trying to find a planet, a suitable planet for the Genesis program, which is something that can reinvigorate life, basically give life to a dead planet or to a dead area of space. So they come across Khan and his bunch of cronies, who actually were left there from what Sean tells me from an episode of Star Trek itself. So it was kind of cool that apparently this is happening. I don't know any about the television show. I didn't watch it, but that's cool that they would use something like that, especially when you are using that in a film as a very heavy plot basis. Khan is pissed that Kirk is all cool and handy and he wants revenge which is kind of oddly but not very subtly displayed with Moby Dick being on this bookshelf that they find. He gets control of the ship that Chekhov was on and they go to get Genesis. Genesis group tried to warn Kirk. Kirk comes there and they have this confrontation. And least to say it's definitely not as fast as the new movies because you're seeing actual big models move around with laser beams and whatnot. And it's actually pretty cool because Kirk is getting his ass handed to him, almost, but then he's able to use something that he's got wits about him. Now, here is the one thing that I give to Into Darkness over the Wrath of Khan. I think Benedict's Khan is better. Now let me explain. I see you over there, Sean, staring at that. Khan is a superhuman. He has great strength, he has a superior intelligence to that of a normal person, and he has lots of commanding knowledge. Not actual experience, but he has knowledge of it. That is in both characters. However, in the original, he is so hell-bent on revenge that his entire superior intelligence is thrown out the window about halfway through his film time. Now, admittedly, he is obviously bent on revenge. There is the whole Moby Dick thing. I get that. But if you were still... You have... He basically has two moments where he actually gets over on Kirk. The whole con scene. Now, that's something that I've always thought of as con, Kirk being beaten completely. Like, actually, holy shit, I've lost. Yet, it's all a ruse. And that's what really kind of let me down with that scene is that... He actually gets up on Khan so many times in this film that Khan's superior intelligence is wasted against the power of the Shatner. In the new film, he's able to outsmart Kirk and Spock at every freaking turn. Every moment that they have an, a, a chance to try and get one up on him, he's already thought of it. And that's what I think a person with extreme intelligence would have. They wouldn't be able to be beaten by an overly cheesy actor in a fake hair mop. Other than that, the film plays out at a moderate pace. Admittedly, watching this in the theater, we had just seen Looper and Inception, so I was kind of fidgeting because I had just seen two very intense films. This, obviously, is a film that still stands to its date. It is a little bit slower in comparison to what you may think of films of that time, but it still is an entertaining flick. But just to see Ricardo Montalban... Oh, his lines out, is so entertaining. Anytime he starts talking, I just start almost giggling. 
And that's another thing that I guess I've overly humorized him, which kind of ruins the experience for me. But I understand at the time, this guy was pretty badass walking around with half a shirt on and an amazing mullet of hair and basically being like, oh, let's kill Kirk. In the end, though, this film still has a few tricks up its sleeve, especially with the entire Genesis simulation. The Genesis simulation was actually the first time Pixar ever did anything. This was their first major feat of CG, and it was incredibly done. The amount of work that went into this simple simulation, that really actually doesn't affect the plot. It's a presentation of how something works was pretty impressive for the time, and it still holds up in comparison to when you think, well, what they were limited to. This scene kind of almost overplays what Star Wars had, especially in Star the first one, and even in the second one. So in the end, how does Wrath of Khan rate up in my system? Well, it is dated. It has a, suffered a little bit from the, its age, and as I said, I'm not a big of as a fan of this con in comparison to the other one, but I admit this one is better. This one has a lot more <laughs> of a stable base to it. It actually has characters, especially the leads, who are realistic to what they are. They are fractured human beings, other than Kirk. I think Kirk's a little bit too super in this. But other than that, I like how the film plays out, I like how it ends, and I think Spock's scene is incredible. It was so hogwashed in the new one that I was like, are you freaking kidding me? And the thing with the old one is, if I'm correct, they actually thought that this was going to be the end of the films. They didn't think they were going to do another one, so they went out on a high note. And unlike Into Darkness, where they brought back Kirk in the fucking same film but in this one they actually killed off spock with the intention of keeping him dead until they made the search the search for spock so anyway guys my review for wrath of khan is a five out of seven it is dated it is kind of old but it still has some pretty memorable moments and it is definitely one of the best of the original star trek films but I still think it's hype is overdone, and I don't think it's the best one. I think it's the Undiscovered Country. Anyway, that's all for me, guys. I'll see you later.